YouTubers, it's Platt, and I'm here today to give you some tips for bottling your home brew. Let's go! Well, you've brewed up a batch of beer, mead, cider, what have you. You've allowed to ferment, and now you're ready to bottle. First consideration in bottling is selecting the right bottle. Probably the easiest thing to do is to buy bottles from the home brew shop. I like to save a penny or two, so I'll reuse beer bottles that I've drank at home. I do uh, caution you, be sure not to use the twist top, as the caps won't fit on top. Glass, however, is not your only option. Several brew kits include reusable plastic bottles. A lot of home brewers like to use these plastic soda bottles. Great thing about plastic soda bottles is when you put the beer in and it starts to carbonate, you can feel the progress of the carbonation. A trend you might have noticed at your local liquor store is the aluminum bottle can. Now I'm personally not a big fan of putting my home brew into a glorified beer can. But if you want to take your home brew out to the beach or by the pool, that is an option for you. I also want to discuss a bottle I used a lot when I first got into home brewery. The Grohl 16 ounce swing top or resealable bottle. Great for home brewing, but I do want to warn you, that gasket or the seal can get dirty, so be sure you clean that thoroughly if you use those gross bottles. Since we're talking about bottles, I want to talk about the concept of the color of, bo of the bottle. Light's an enemy of beer, and you want to avoid clear bottles or even the green bottles as they allow a lot of light in. The dark bottle beers or beer bottles are your best choice. If you use, let's say, an old beer bottle that you drink, be sure to soak these bottles and get the labels off, as the labels are areas of potential contamination. Great thing about these beer bottles, though, is that they're dishwasher safe and you can just clean them in the dishwasher, kind of save yourself some work. If you go the plastic bottle route, you're going to have to wash these suckers by hand. Now that we've discussed the bottles, let's talk about the equipment we'll need to bottle our brew. Well, you've selected your bottle, now it's time to review some of the equipment we'll need to bottle your home brew. As you know, sanitation is very important in home brewing, so the first thing you're naturally going to need is some sanitizer. Whatever type you choose is just fine. If you're using kit beers, some of the kits have a built-in spigot in the fermenter. It makes it pretty easy, you just will bottle straight out of the fermenter. But if you use a different kind of fermentation vessel, let's say like a glass carboy, you're going to have to transfer that into a bottling bucket that has a spigot. Now the way you transfer the liquids is using what's called a racking cane and connect it with a siphoning tube. And when you siphon, obviously you know that what you're siphoning to needs to be lower than what you're siphoning from. Now many a home brewer are satisfied with just using the spigot off a bottling bucket or the fermenter for their beer. But using the spigot like that sometimes allows excess air into the beer, which can be kind of harmful. So if you want to take your home brew to the next level, I suggest you getting what's called a bottling wand. How this works is through the siphoning tube connected to the spigot, you will insert in the bottom of the bottle of beer, it's spring loaded, and you fill from the bottom up. And very little air gets into your beer that way. So if you have a few extra dollars, I suggest buying the bottling wand. Now, the last couple items we have for home for bottling your brew is bottle caps and the capper. These are fairly self-explanatory. You put the cap on top and then voila. Great thing about the caps is at your local homebrew shop they have a variety so it kind of lets you personalize your beers. Well now that we've got all this equipment out we need to sanitize it. I found the easiest way to sanitize all my equipment is to use my big bottling bucket fill her up with sanitizer and just throw everything in. My clean bottles, my bottle capper, bottle caps, racking cane, and siphoning tube. 
And I'll throw them all in there and just let them sit for a little bit. And then when I'm getting ready to clear out all the sanitizer, I'll run the sanitizer through the spigot a few times before I'm ready to rinse out the bucket. Now this particular sanitizer is a no rinse sanitizer, but I'll still give her a quick, quick rinse just in case. So while I let this sit, I'll discuss with you the concept of priming. Well, we've got our bottles and equipment in the sanitizer, and while I'm set, I want to discuss with you the concept of priming. Now, when we bottle, we also want to carbonate our beer. And the best way to do that is to reactivate the yeast. If you remember from our Making Booze video, yeast, besides producing alcohol, also produce CO2. And it's that CO2 that's going to carbonate our beer. And the way we get that yeast reactivated is by adding sugar. Now the simplest way is just to add it to each bottle we plan on filling. Most people use regular old table sugar, and that's just fine. Some home brewers like to use dried malt extract. And a lot of the beers you'll brew, you're using it anyway, so why not use it to prime? A simplest way to uh, prime your home brew is these little car tabs or glorified sugar pills. You'll add two or three to a bottle and that's generally good enough. Now I do advise you to, if you're using kits, to read the instructions on the amount of priming sugar or you can go online and find what's called a priming calculator. Most of your big homebrew sites will have those on there and just punch in the numbers and it'll help you find the right amount of priming sugar. You don't want too much because you could have balls exploding and you don't want too little because you might have flat home brew. Now if you're brewing large amounts, let's say 5 gallons, 10 gallons, what have you, you want to do something called batch priming. Basically what it is is you will add sugar, create a sugar water solution and add it to the beer before you bottle it so you don't have to go through the rigorous process of adding sugar to each bottle. This really saves time if you're bottling up two cases or more of beer. A good example is, let's say you brewed a five-gallon batch of amber ale. Take three-quarters of a cup of table sugar into a cup of boiled water, add it all together to make sure the sugar is fully integrated with the water, and then you add to your bottling bucket before you siphon in your brew. And that way you have an equal amount of sugar in all your bottles of brew. For our little experiment today, and what I'm going to show you is, I'm just going to take a gallon of cider that I made, and we're going to bottle that. So to do that, I'm just going to use these little card tabs. They're easier on smaller batches. Well, now that we've discussed priming, it's time to bottle. Well, we've sanitized all our equipment. I've transferred my cider into my bottling bucket, and we're ready to go. Now, I like to do this over my dishwasher makes my setup and cleanup a lot easier. I've got my bottles racked and drying off right here. In case we have a spillage, I'm right over the door and it just all goes in there, so it makes cleanup easier. And I've kind of got a workbench. I've got my caps, my cappers, my bottles. We're ready to go. Now I've done my research on my, on my little sugar pills, and for these 22 ounce bottles, I'll need six of them in each bottle. So I'll put them in. If uh, you're using regular table sugar water, I might advise you having a uh, funnel for your sugar. So I've got my tablets in, and now I'm just ready to pour in the cider. Now I want to fill up the bottle about an inch or so up the neck, because I want to leave plenty of space for the carbonation or CO2 we're going to create in this bottle. You don't want to leave too little air, but you don't want too much as it'll affect the rate you carbonate. So I've got my bottle filled. We'll put the cap on. And we'll cap. There we go. Well, you've got it. We've got our home brew in a bottle with a priming sugar. Now we're going to let this sit out for room temperature roughly one or two weeks. And then after that, we're going to put it in our fridge for another week or so. Now if you're doing lager beers or different style beers, you might want to check. A lot of lager beers will need to sit for up to a couple of months. But this cider 
a week or two room temp and a week in the fridge and we should be drinking delicious sparkling apple cider. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please subscribe down below. Until next time, bye-bye.